A workshop is like a box of eggs. When you open it up, you find that you've got some happy people in there. Look, he's just got a pay rise, but this one, he's not very happy. You always get one in the box, he's not very happy. And then, oh look, here's the apprentice. He's still asleep because he spent all night playing Xbox. Okay, so it's happy workshop eggs. Bit of an odd week this week. Unit fitting. Okay, for trailer fair, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, you know why, don't you? Because it's not often that trailer fitters actually get to service units, but mm, look at this. That's the first one in today. And it's got yellow leather seats and yellow, yellow leather floor and matching interior as well. Quite interesting actually with a daft bed with the Superman logo. Yeah, okay, I don't know what he's trying to say there. I do know something, not much, but I do know how to get the cab over on that. You turn that little gizmo there and then you put the stick in and then you pump it. But Daft Course told me that if you take the Susies out of the stowage, they won't get stressed as the cab goes over. Yeah, so we'll take those out. That's a clever idea though, I like that. Yeah, I'm really never too much involved other than connecting the Susies up and unconnecting them again from trailers, but I like that no tangle. And uh, we've got a cab over, and what's going on here? Yeah, this is, I think they call it an engine, don't they, or something like that. I vaguely remember on a tech course that I did when I was younger, and that was a long, long time ago. Yeah, it's things that make the wheels go round, somehow. Yeah, Dad told me don't put your fingers in there if it's running. Mm, okay, so we won't put our fingers in there, even though it's not running. And this is even more confusing, what's that big metal thing over there? And what are these things? Yeah. Yeah, this is all new stuff. Oh, well, I know this one. This is a fifth wheel. This is where the kingpin of the trailer clicks into. Yeah, that's the important bit, isn't it? The greasy bit. And I've got this thing here, which um, somebody gave me to have a look at. It. It's like a mobile phone, except I can't get any phone numbers up on it. Can't make a call on it, and I can't get YouTube on it either. Yeah, that's actually quite annoying. What is it? Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll have to do is go and have a look at the instruction manual on this one. It's not quite an IKEA thing that you can put together without the instructions. You've actually got to read this. Yeah, it's an endoscope. It's a camera that you can uh, do inspections with in holes and tight spaces that you can't get your eyeballs into. Okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll have a go with this, shall we? Yeah. It's got a torch on the end of it. That's quite good. Mm, okay, so let's go. We'll do this on the DAF. It's really hard on the calipers to see the brake pads because of the uh, twin wheel arrangement. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I'll have a look at the fronts there as well. Oh, actually, yeah. See the pads all right. Yeah, that's not too bad. I can get an accurate reading on that. Yeah, that's handy. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, cool. Fill a neck on a HDB tank. This has an anti softening device on it to stop naughty little people stealing diesel. To be honest with you, what they'll do is they'll still try to rip that off because they're so dumb. This is the most vulnerable part of the tank, which is the sender unit. Okay, so uh, all you need to do really is just pull a tab out, pull the pipes off. So you lift that out, pull the pipes off, and then you can unscrew it, pull it out, and you have access to the diesel. Amazing. It's just a little bit of insider information. Anyway, yes, like I said, we have been doing units all week because of the lack of uh, technicians in the workshop and it's a severe shortage now. So uh, I'll show you a few bits and pieces that I know. Not that I know too much, but with DAFs, you've got to check the clips that hold the disc on. And they can chatter, they can come loose, they can rot and fall out, okay? You have to spin the wheel for that. The biggest ball egg on any unit with twin wheels is checking the pad depths on the rear. They are really hard to do. So first of all, I want to show you the tool that I've got to do it with, which is interesting. So the version here, I'll just scroll through the menu. This is uh, Teslong model TS43, which is a smaller resolution than the one we've done before. I did a review on this. This is 1080p or true 1080p. This is a two camera bore scope. Okay, so uh, it's not bad actually. This uh, is a go to every single day right now. 
Yes, yeah, so uh, give this a test run, and I've, I, I think you'll probably agree that I've uh, spent a couple of months on this using it, and I've been using it every single day to do regular inspections. They did make a spelling mistake. That was at the printers. They've now rectified that. Not that it matters, because the cardboard box doesn't reflect actually what's inside. It's a good bit of kit, and it's uh, yeah, about the size of a mobile phone with a very long extension cord lead, okay? So this is what it looks like when it's new, <laughs> and it still looks the same. It's actually lasted the time. So Teslong is a good name. It's Chinese. It's Chinese made anyway. And this one is a three-camera bore scope. It's, it has uh, three cameras, two side cameras, and a front camera. Okay, tiny little things, and they're all illuminated. Image is not too bad. I won't tell you the resolutions. You have to suss that out for yourself by looking at the description. But it's down to the operator how you get a clear image. Generally, what we want to do is just get an image so we can see what's going on. And this is pretty good. You can mess about with it. You can mess about with the focus and the camera angles. You can turn it upside down, right side up, whichever way you need to. It does take a little bit of time to work out how to operate this thing. But once you've uh, got it sussed, you can then start really uh, <laughs> hitting the ground running with it okay so that's inside a brake chamber looking for broken springs as usual okay endoscope the word endoscope is actually a, a uh, quite a hard word to say let alone spell and did have to look at the instruction booklet to find out how to toggle between cameras now the probe is yeah it's actually quite long uh, we don't need the full length here but i do need to be able to toggle to get a side camera there are two side cameras and a forward facing camera and you also have uh, mirrors uh, fittings within this but uh, the important bit here for what we're doing is to get a side camera so we got that with the torch why so serious not so serious but it is a serious business actually because you can't see the brake pad depths like this it's almost impossible unless you use a tool or use ESP or something yeah and you can see how awkward it is to get there this is on the DAF XF's on the rear axle okay this is on the DAF LF on the rear axle the the uh, brake calipers are in a different position same as the uh, front axle brake pads as well basically steering axles it's the same thing you can see them but it's better to use a tool that you can access them very very quickly otherwise you're going to struggle and most guys do to try and uh, work out the depths and the brake pads on the rear wear out quicker right so this is the mirror round mirror we use and this is the tool added to the service instruments uh, arsenal okay so that's just as easy as that you can see which way the torch needs to go around or the light for the camera and yeah it's cracked it but obviously you can use it for whatever application you need to and this was uh, when i first got this tool uh, nice shiny wheel but underneath there was a cracked disc so we uh, could see through the holes first of all very clearly worked out that it was cracked so we could then take the wheel off otherwise you've got to take the wheel off to inspect the other side of the disc which is the hot side yeah this is where the air doesn't get to as much but you can see the cracks there this disc now is unserviceable okay so yeah it's a handy tool to use i must admit it's changed my approach to uh, the way i service things it's the same thing with the uh, structural here on uh, legs this is a bracket uh, to trailer landing legs to the chassis which do get a lot of wear same with brake chambers as well you can't see the springs unless you look in and you can't put your fingers in them and i warn against it i know somebody got their finger crushed as a spring started to release okay so yeah this is a game changer because even before doing a brake test a loaded brake test and you have the vehicle uh, unloaded it means you can do the work so i know that i have faulty springs when i can actually see them that's a visual you can take a video and a picture or, and then send it to the customer if needs be so that works okay and uh, getting back to this uh, chassis bracket for the leg this yeah an inspection well i took this off i knew it was cracked because i'd seen it with this instrument but I'll, i will just show you when i find the crack here and you should be able to see it on the screen you can see very clearly there is uh, fatigue cracking okay it doesn't help when the loaded trailers are tugged all over the place with the legs down yeah it just is one of those things it's that's life uh, if it's mechanical it's going to break isn't it if it's structural it's going to fracture so yeah what we have here is the uh, lf front discs 
and this just cuts service times down just that little bit more so if you're interested in this the links will be below if it's available in the UK if not I will let you know in another video okay guys okay so I'm gonna give you a little bit more guide into uh, what I use some tools I use for a uh, servicing yeah which is uh, coffee now with this one with instead of a mirror but we have the hammers and the uh, bar which is for uh, pry barring and a few other bits and pieces and of course there is the pen that is mightier than any spanner or any sword okay and with dafts that's for the rear diff that's t70 and an m22 socket yeah this one you might be interested in this is a shortcut to help you out okay these are water pump pliers which i don't know why they're called that never used them on water pumps ever okay they do open to quite a large aperture okay and i'll show you about that later but we've got the cab bar as well which i've already shown you jacking up the cabs it is it's a thing you've got to go under the cab to do your checks some garages might not we always do now i don't know if you uh keen-eyed guys noticed there was an actual uh <laughs> an extra susie there this is uh, anderson lead for uh, tail lifts didn't see that initially but you're always aware of uh, what you're doing while you're while you're doing it don't you okay so once under the cab under the cab it's not just about uh checking the oil you've got to look for exhaust leaks that's egr um, pipe and then you've got your exhaust manifold there yeah leak then they need to be rectified of course and this one yeah okay we've got coolant leak here okay this is the thermostat housing so that's a little rectification job it's all about inspection and checking so yeah what i have is a bar to uh, check for bush wear on the fifth wheel yeah important jobs to do so what i've got to show you here we've got a new pit jack nice before on the second pit was a manual one which was hard work but yeah basically a jack and you lift your axles your steering axles up uh, you check your tires your kingpin lift your wheel bearings in fact you do it on uh, all axles that you have and you have to work safely when you're doing this obviously and the bar that I have, well, basically it's for uh, kingpin lift checking and also for prying the wheels around. As you can see here, what I can do is uh, turn the wheel and then have a good look at the tyre surface to see if it's picked anything up or it's cut to cord. Very critical, actually, on the steering axle or the front axle. Yeah, so, uh, okay, I'll just show you this. I'm going to go around the other side and check as well but this is a regular maintenance habit you've got to get into a routine if you're in the trade or if you have vehicles that you rely on and use them a lot you need to do checks regular checks which is not just walk around and check to see if the wheels are still on and the lights work It's a bit more involved than that so yeah what i'll do is i'll, I'll turn it lock to lock and you can see that the second axle is actually mechanically attached because that's turns with the front axle okay so there's actually uh, quite a lot of force to overcome there and i will check the second and the third axles after i've done these checks but yeah spun that around come back around and then away we go okay so our pits are really are the best place to service and inspect a unit rather than using the lifts the lifts you have to put the axles on stands to be able to get the wheels free yeah so there just to check the wheel bearing okay now this is the water pump supply what we use this for is a quick check okay usually you do a shake and break which involves uh, the steering being moved with the uh, wheels on the floor on the ground and then that will show you if the ball joint lifts up and down but this is a good way to check them to see if there's any play in the ball joints okay this is if you're on your own and you're waiting for some guy to uh, help you with a shake and break okay so uh, yeah this is what you do is you put that like that and then you squeeze it to see if there's any play and it will show up okay so you do that with all ball joints and this one has a lot of ball joints on it okay so what's in the box this is a hard box and uh, as you can imagine there'd have to be something sensitive or something electronic in here so let's take a look at this care package shall we yeah look uh, battery tester from top down bt 300p and a prototype underneath okay battery maintenance is critical it's not just about 
looking at the battery terminals to make sure that they are not corroded and you're getting a good circuit okay they need to be secure and we lubricate them the batteries need to be secure in place especially on hgvs yeah thing is now with a lot of batteries you get little check windows which is okay if it goes black you need to check it yes now you're going to check it jump up and down and uh, shake it no what you do is use a battery tester don't you right so these are all good they're in green they're okay don't need to worry about it and this is daf xf that's where the batteries are kept so uh, the battery uh, tester is actually more than that this is 12 24 volt kit okay and although it's 24 volt uh, you have to test the batteries individually 12 volts it makes sense doesn't it because this will tell you if you've got a duff battery in a pair okay so straight away red which means without even looking any harder you know that it's not good so I've been putting this for its paces I'm not going to give you a review in this video I'm just going to give you the heads up that I will be doing a review but this is actually brilliant yeah it uh, gives you a quick indication of uh, battery health as you've seen you've seen a red you've seen a green and you've seen a yellow one uh, you get a printout for details for uh, service sheets and stuff like that or for personal records or for warranty claims as well okay because you can go back to manufacturers or, or suppliers and say oh this battery's duff and you've proved it straight away okay and it doesn't take long to test now uh, this is really aimed at the professional in the commercial vehicle market okay so we have uh, our en1200 batteries and it takes as long as this to test it yeah this is not just a battery tester it also will check uh, for charging voltage and, and cranking um, voltages and stuff like that which i'm going to review shortly okay yeah i have to do a lot i'm running this through a lot of vehicles and we have chucked a lot of vehicles back out on the roads after changing the batteries and this was a help yeah especially when you're short staffed okay like we are we need a tester otherwise you get called out at three o'clock in the morning uh, with a non-start you still need one of these to test the batteries and to prove to the customer it is the battery okay so i will be doing a, a good review on this and it's going to take a little while okay we'll get good uh, video footage first so you can see there red batteries duff yeah that is uh, one of two which means both have to be changed you always change them in pairs so underneath the bt300p there is the bt600 which is a prototype it's not out on the market and we have the privilege to test it